Hi, I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos, and this is a short presentation on pineal region neoplasms. You may earn AMA Category 1 CME credit by going to the MedPix website. We have no significant disclosures related to this presentation. Let's take a look at the pineal region normal anatomy. This is a sagittal T2 weighted image. We can see the clivus, we can see the corpus callosum, we can see the flow voids for the branches of the anterior cerebral artery. We can also see the flow voids for the internal cerebral veins, the great vein of Galen, and the straight sinus. The orientation of the opening in the tentorium, the hiatus, is between the anterior clinoid process and the anterior margin of the straight sinus. The pineal gland is located at the crossroads between supratentorial and infratentorial, just above the tentorial hiatus. Symptoms and signs related to the pineal region can be anatomically localized as the Perinod syndrome, related to pressure on the tectal plate. The patients may have interruption of the normal physiology between the hypothalamus and the pineal and present with precocious puberty. This is generally described as being under the age of 8 for American girls and under the age of 9 for American boys. And the patients may have nonspecific signs and symptoms from increased intracranial pressure, such as headache, nausea, and vomiting. The vast majority of pineal region masses are germ cell tumors thought to arise from rests of multipotential germ cells in the quadrigeminal plate cistern surrounding the pineal gland. The majority of germ cell tumors are going to be the germinoma histology, also known as atypical teratoma and dysgerminoma, and approximately one-third of the germ cell tumors will be intracranial teratomas. Almost one out of seven pineal region masses will arise from the pineal parenchyma itself, and pineal cysts are very, very common, but they are not neoplastic. If we look at the AFIP series of pineal region germ cell tumors, we can see that two-thirds of the germ cell tumors have the single histology of the germinoma or seminoma or atypical teratoma or dysgerminoma. All four of those are acceptable synonyms. So the germinoma is the most common tumor type, and despite arising from primordial precursor cells, the five-year survival is up to 90%. The teratoma, which may be mature, immature, or malignant, has a five-year survival of almost 74%. Let's take a look at pineal region masses to see if there are criteria that would allow us to diagnose these two most common lesions, starting with germinoma. Again, the germinoma is the most common pineal region mass and the most common pineal region germ cell tumor. The cell of origin is thought to be germ cell rest, the incidence is relatively low, less than 3% of all intracranial neoplasms, but they represent up to 4% of pediatric intracranial neoplasms, and in Japan, up to 15% of pediatric neoplasms. The patients range in age from the first through the fourth decades. Remember that the patients tend to be young because precocious puberty is a common presenting symptom. And the tumor has a very good prognosis because it is sensitive to both radiation and chemotherapy, with a median survival of 19 years and a 90% survival at 5 years. The tumor is most commonly identified as engulfing or surrounding pineal gland calcification. This pattern was first described in the early days of computer tomography in the 1980s. Here is a classic example showing how the tumor is also hyperattenuating compared to the adjacent brain tissue. MR does not show the same characteristics of specificity, and on MR the tumor is often identified as a nonspecific gray matter signal intensity mass, but the lesion location in the quadrigeminal plate cistern is always going to be very, very suggestive. So we have in the cartoon here a schematic of a hyperattenuating tumor surrounding an even more dense central calcification, which is thought to be native within the pineal gland itself. Pineal region masses tend to grow through the tentorial hiatus into the posterior fossa. On this coronal T1-weighted exam without contrast, 
and then after giving contrast material, we can clearly see that two-thirds of this tumor is extending through the tentorial opening into the posterior fossa. We can also see outlined in green the, the tentorial leaflets, and we can see how the tumor is extending into the posterior fossa. When we look at the histology of pineal region tumors, we can see they commonly have a two-cell pattern. One of these cells looks like a lymphocyte. It's a small, round blue cell, seen here at a higher magnification. These small, round blue cells probably give the tumor its normal high attenuation on a non-contrast CT scan. Another example here on CT showing a hyperattenuating mass in the region of the third ventricle and quadrigeminal plate cistern. And in this particular case, the calcifications in the pineal gland are pushed off to the side rather than being engulfed or surrounded by the mass. In the context of surgical planning, the most important information are the venous landmarks. We have to locate the flow voids for the internal cerebral veins and the vein of Galen as well as the straight sinus. If the tumor is below these veins, the neurosurgeon may choose a suboccipital infratentorial approach. If the tumor is above these veins or has a different anatomic relationship, then a wide variety of surgical approaches have been tried for pineal region mass resection. The second most common mass in the pineal region is going to be the teratoma. And again, teratomas are approximately one-third of all of the germ cell tumors in the pineal region. Teratomas are usually sharply circumscribed, typically very lobulated and multicystic, consisting of heterogeneous signal intensity and heterogeneous attenuation corresponding to the heterogeneous mixture of different types of tissue, including fluid, lipid, soft tissue, and calcification. Solid portions of the teratomas most commonly will show contrast enhancement. We can see here side by side in the axial plane a non-contrast CT and a non-contrast T1 weighted MR demonstrating a focus of lipid material with attenuation lower than that of water and signal intensity higher than that of water on the corresponding MR. When we give contrast enhancement using gadolinium, we can see that the solid portions of the tumor show very bright contrast enhancement. Lipid is our friend, and the recognition of lipid within this heterogeneous mass in the quadrigeminal plate cistern is a pretty sure sign that this is going to be a pineal region teratoma. In looking at the histology of pineal region teratomas, we expect to see a variety of different types of tissue, including, as illustrated here, squamous epithelium, sebaceous glands, and the posse cellular basophilic material, which is cartilage. Having cartilage next to epithelial structures is not an inclusion cyst, but rather represents a neoplastic process of divergent differentiation from multipotential precursor cells. So this is going to be a teratoma. Many people are confused about the difference between teratomas and dermoids. The well-defined and well-known ovarian dermoid cyst is actually a teratoma, a true neoplasm arising from multipotential cells. The other type of dermoid is an inclusion cyst, and it represents trapping of the surface ectoderm being pulled below the surface and forming a closed space. The dermoid inclusion cyst is usually unilocular, while the teratoma, which is a neoplasm, is usually multilocular and very, very lobulated. Here's an example of a pineal region tumor that was diagnosed as a dermoid cyst. We can see it is very heterogeneous with significant components of lipid material and a dense chunk of calcification. We can see here in the MR scan of the same patient that we have a fat fluid level and we can see that this is horizontal reminding us that the patient is lying supine within the scanner. Although, again, this was described as a dermoid cyst, because of the heterogeneity of the components, this was most likely a pineal region teratoma. So pineal region teratomas are going to be heterogeneous with lipid material, water-like material, and solid components, as is illustrated here in this example. I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos, and I approve this message. Thank you very much for your time and attention.